Ooh, it's been a minute, both since I made a video and since we've seen an episode of The Fan Showdown. And good news, today I'm back, I'm over the Rona, I'm feeling pretty good, and today is episode four, well, no, it's season four, episode 10. Now, first up, we have Kyle from Queensland, Australia, and his fan, Endothermic. Kyle said that after binge watching a lot of The Fan Showdown, he decided it was time to make a fan after one of his favorite symbols the radioactive symbol, sus. Now Kyle did go on to say they didn't have the highest hopes for this fan. He was hoping they would maybe just finish towards the top, but I think you're selling yourself short, Kyle. I think this fan is pretty solid. I think it may be top 10, uh, yeah. And it was really easy to print. So in that, in my book, you're already ahead. Now this next one has a pretty aggressive name. This is the Finger Remover 9000. Ian said his design was inspired by 3D printed EDF blades. He's been working on, you know, some EDF blades or turbine designs for his EDF motor and uh, decided that one of his designs that he liked, he was gonna configure it to work for the fan shutdown setup. And here we go. Also, I think I think I need an EDF. I think we could get in some, some pretty beefy trouble with an EDF if we had like one of them big boys. Now for the most part, this is a pretty standard looking fan. I think it'll do pretty well. Uh, it's got a lot of blades. They print it very easily. Again, support material came off easy. Always a big fan of that. And I think Ian's got a good shot of placing towards the top as well. However, <laughs> given the fan's name is Finger Remover 9000, I thought I couldn't resist, you know, adding in another test to just see no! if it held true. Oh, you're not off to a good start, Ian. Now from this point, things get a little, a little more interesting, you could say. This next one is called the Yang Blade and it was created by Aaron. Now this fan just in, its, in and of itself made me laugh. It reminded me of like sitting in grade school, drawing yin yangs on my Trapper Keeper while I wasn't paying attention in class. Also, it reminds me of like a more refined version of the, the tulip. You remember that fan? Aaron said that he had been creeping around the fan showdown for some time and decided, you know what? It was time to throw his hat in the ring. And what he wanted to do was create a fan that was one blade, but also kind of like a piece of art. And I think so far, two for two, Aaron. Definitely one blade and definitely looks like a yin yang, which is what you were going for. Now, Aaron, like us, knows that the biggest issue with these really tall fans is the balance. They, they're really hard to get perfectly balanced and then they start wiggling and then it's just all over from there. He did run a mass properties in SolidWorks and it does show the CG at being in the center. But given that we 3D print this and not, you know, mold it out of plastic, there's gonna be a little bit of a iffy, iffy space if that's actually gonna hold true. As long as it moves air and looks as good as it does, I think it's a win in my book. We'll have to see how well how well it how well it's balanced but either way appearance 10 out of 10. Now this last one is probably in my opinion one of the most interesting fans I've ever seen on the series. It's 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 set up in a way that we've never seen before and the fact that it's made of multiple pieces isn't what really makes it special. It's how these pieces are configured into the final product. This series of parts is called the Neater Cheater Beater and it was created by Andrew. And the thing about this fan that I was talking about is it's set up backwards from what we normally think of in a fan. Where, where do I have a fan, 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 fan? All right, so here is an A12X25, the fan that we use for all the testing here. And most fans, literally every fan that I know of that's ever been created for PC cooling is set up kind of like this. The fan is mounted on top of the motor. Behind the motor, you have a support structure that supports the motor and the airflow moves from this side to this side. And as it passes across the, the frame of the fan, it has to go around these different supports and it creates a little bit of turbulence in the, in the whole setup. And Andrew says that's unacceptable. And he set out to fix it. In Aaron's design, the exhaust of the fan is this way around. So the, the fan itself is mounted here. And then he's got some clever shrouding that goes around all of the different support structures for the motor to try to streamline everything as much as possible to remove any turbulence and just prov provide nice, straight, awesome airflow. And uh, I, I really do think this is interesting. Maybe Aaron has stumbled onto something that every single manufacturer of fans or PC fans has kind of just overlooked. This could be, this could be something special. Now, full disclosure, I did have to make some minor modifications to his uh, setup. I had to cut a little bit of uh, plastic out to give it some clearance for these, uh, the wiring here. And then also this rear stator kind of goes around the motor like so, then mates up with the, uh, the support structure to give a nice streamlined airflow. And it doesn't really connect anything. So I, I had to, you know, first 
screw everything down and then use a little bit of tape to kind of hold this in place. I hope you don't mind. I know in the past I've seen the comments where people are like, you know, if you gotta make minor changes to a fan, go ahead and do it. It's better to do that and test it than to just skip it all together. So let me know in the comment section down below if this bothers you. And if it doesn't, if I see stuff like this in the future, we'll just make the little changes needed and send it. Anyway, on to the testing. Let's first, let's first have a listen. The Neater Cheater Beater came in around 54.5 dBA. The Finger Remover 9000 came in around 50.8 dBA. The Endothermic came in around 50 dBA. And the Yang Blade came in around 58.8. Now, the Yang Blade, as we expected, suffered from some pretty extensive vibration. For the most part, once it started spinning up, it was good up until it got to like a certain RPM and then everything just kind of started shaking, shaking all over the place. So the sound profile was pretty erratic to say the least. Now it did feel like it was moving some air, so I do have hopes that it will function as designed. So how did they all finish? The Yang Blade produced 523 feet per minute of airflow. The Finger Remover 9000 produced 639 feet per minute of airflow. The Endothermic produced 616 feet per minute of airflow. And the Neater Cheater Beater produced 665 feet per minute of airflow, placing them overall 5th, 7th, 11th, and 23rd. Now, although the Neater Cheater Beater didn't beat the legendary cheater, it by no means did poorly. It actually did very well, placed on the board, fifth overall. And I think somebody out there watching is gonna see this type of setup and be like, I get it, this is this is what I was looking for. And I maybe a little bit of refinement in the, the, the assembly itself or the blade angle will produce a fan that can actually beat the cheater, which would be pretty crazy since we've been after the cheater since, well, this whole season and last season. But I think it can be done. I know it can be done. And somebody out there will do it. And if you wanna get in on the fan showdown, head down to the description below all the information you need on where to send your designs, what dimensions to make sure you hit to fit on the A12X25 fan body is all down there. Thank you all for watching. I hope you get subscribed. I hope to see you sooner than uh, it took for this, uh, this span between two videos now that I'm feeling a little better. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.